Well, okay, gang, we're back and we're ready to, to frame up a wing. We've got all of our ribs cut out. I got them. Eighth inch ribs, I got the center rib, the all important W1, I've got the W2, I've got the W3, and I've got a stack of 16th ribs there somewhere. <laughs> anyway, what I wanted to show you here with what we've got here is uh, if you're building with a glass, in this case, this is a piece, this is an old piece of tempered glass that I've had for years and years, and I build on it. And I like to build on it because I can slide my plans right underneath it, like I've got here, and then I can build right on top of it. And should I happen to glue a piece directly to the piece of glass, well, I can just take my straight edge razor and ever so carefully, you know, work underneath it and get it to come back up. So that's a good way to protect your plans. Remember, when you get an airplane kit and you have plans for it, well, you want to protect them because you know, later down the line, you may very well decide to build that airplane again, or if you, heaven forbid, have a crack up, smack the airplane up, you, you're going to want to have, you know, uh, you know, a way to repair it, uh, make new ribs, make a new wing, make a new wing half, whatever. So that's, that's uh, the reason you want to protect your plans. Now, in this case, you guys probably all don't have a piece of tempered glass, and that is completely understandable. I'm going to take this out. What I do have, I just got back from my home improvement store and I picked up this piece of acoustic tile. Now this is, if you've ever seen the drop ceilings in schools and businesses and so forth, that's all this is, but I use the back side of it because it's a relatively smooth surface, smooth enough for this project, and you can put your plans down on it. Now again, if you were building from a set of plans that you'd purchased, maybe you'd paid eight, 10, 12, 15, 20 dollars for a set of plans, and you want to be able to protect those plans, you can just roll out a piece of wax paper. But because these plans I came up with, they're mine, and I printed them off on my printer and just used, uh, what, four or five pages and butted them up together and taped them, these are expendable because I still have the electronic file. So we're not going to bother uh, protecting them. I am going to put it where I want to, where I want it to be, and then I'm going to tack the corners with just some regular thumbtacks into the back side of this stuff. So I'm going to do that and get back with you in a moment. All right, well, look what we have here. I have been busy. I have cut from my 16th inch stock, I've cut a piece that's 32 inches long by one inch and a quarter wide. And on this board, I, and, on, and you know, through my plans, I've simply tacked it in place with some um, you know sewing needles is what this is sewing pins and just enough to you know here and there to get it in place now I've brought in one of my 3 16 balsa spars and I've also done the same thing here I don't know how well you can see that um, and I've got got it tacked in place just in a few places because I don't want it to shift around now what I've also done here and I think you can see way back here on the end I've started uh, just positioning ribs just to see how it looks and sliding the rib over the spar and then catching the notch on the trailing edge of that rib I've caught some of this trailing edge sheeting. I've got a little catch there so I've just been positioning. On the end we have our W3 rib which is an eighth inch rib and then we go in with one, two, three, four, five of our one sixteenth inch ribs which are our W4 and then we're back to the W3 1 8 inch ribs, and I've dropped in a couple. And we can go ahead and, you know, put in this one here. Just catch the catch on it there and drop it in place. And I'm just lining it up with the plans so that I can be certain that you know, everything's nice and straight. So that's really all I'm doing here is just to make sure everything is straight. And I'm putting, putting them in place. Here's my 1 16th. Um, W4 ribs. So I just slide it onto the spar and drop it in place. Once we know everything is fitting properly, and if it's not, you can move around uh, pieces. And you know, sometimes you're trailing edge sheeting. In the case of this, this is some old balsa that I've had. It's kind of dry, and in its case, I've got. Uh, it, it, you know, it was kind of crooked from sitting around and, you know, being in the workshop forever, but um, I had to kind of cheat it a little bit by putting it in a little stress by the way I pinned it down, but 
what we have here is a is a wing and I've tested everything everything looks pretty good from this point on I'm ready to start gluing now what kind of glue are we going to use you can use this and I apologize for the shadows of my workshops not built uh, not very well lit but I use super thin CA this is Bob Smith Industries it's one of my favorites and uh, it's just because I can get it locally here um, but you know that as if it doesn't already drive or set fast enough I got kicker but between these two these are four dollars and ninety nine cents each at my local hobby shop that's ten dollars worth of glue what is old crash about well I'm always about keeping it as inexpensive as possible and you know the theme of this aircraft is quick simple and cheap so this is what we're going to use uh, this is left over from my flat former build and it's tight bond it's just a yellow glue wood glue it's called aliphatic resin but really all you have to do with this now is we can pull up one of our ribs in this case I'll start with the end we can take a little bit of this glue and I'll squeeze out just a skosh catch it in the inside of that rib and also where the trailing edge stuff goes just put a little bit you can use a finger I keep paper towels in the shop just for that and now we can set that back in place a lot of people don't realize that you don't have to have expensive glue to build your RC models and balsa now I do recommend you using it uh, sparingly because the only bad thing about yellow glue, about wood glue, is that it does is that it does uh, add weight. Now it's not a lot. If you use it sparingly like I've done there, then you're just fine. Well, I'm going to take a break here and bleed off, and I'm going to glue the rest of the ribs down. See you in a bit. <laughs> 